Hey guys, welcome back. Um, this video is about Jehoshaphat's prayer. And I'm sensing that this is the time that all the saints in America need to be praying the prayer of Jehoshaphat and all of the saints around the world, really, but especially in America. I did also a video a while ago, and it's called Worship! Exclamation point, 2 Chronicles 20, and that is about the same topic, but a different context, if you want to look more into that. But I'm sensing that we need to do what Jehoshaphat did. We have armies coming against us, and we are overwhelmed, and we don't know what to do. So that is a perfect opportunity for the Lord to intervene and to show himself strong for us. So I went through uh, chapter 20 up to verse 22, and I looked at kind of the formula that was presented, and I have it on the board here. So I want to review it with you real quickly. But we want to pray the prayer of Jehoshaphat, and that prayer is in uh, verse 12. So we're going to look at that. Um, that's going to be here. But let's start in verse 3. So this is just an overview. I'm not going into every detail, okay? But it's an overview of this for how it relates to our situation right now. We have three armies coming against us. The leftist Nazis, the New World Order, the beast antichrist system, lies and slavery, all kinds of things coming against us, right? So it's time to do something about that. So we have a lot coming against us. So what did Jehoshaphat do? And let's look at what he did. In verse 3, he had a vital need to seek the Lord. He didn't try to do anything in and of himself. He didn't run around and start making preparations. No, he had a vital need. He recognized his vital need. That means you can't live without it. To seek the Lord. All right, that's verse 3. When some messengers came to him and said, this great army is coming against you, he had a vital need to seek the Lord. He proclaimed a fast. And then in verse 4, he gathered together everyone. Okay? So they gathered together. And this is kind of like the same thing with the human body. When you feel like you're about to get sick, you fast. When you have a huge problem you don't know what to do with, you recognize a vital need for the Lord and you start fasting. See, that is really smart. Verse 4, they all gather together. Verse 6, they extol the Lord. They tell him how great he is. O oh Lord, God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? In your hand are power and might, so that none is able to withstand you. Verse 7, Did not you, O our God, drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendants of Abraham, your friend? Da -da 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 -da. He goes down. He's extolling the Lord and telling him how great he is. And then in verse 7 through 9, he's reminding the Lord, saying, Don't you remember you did this, you did that? You've rescued us so many times before. And then, verse 10 and 11, he presents the problem. So he says, And now, behold, look, the men of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade, when they came from the land of Egypt, and whom they turned from and did not destroy. 11. Behold, they reward us by coming to drive us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. Okay, he's presenting the problem. And then 12 is the request. This is Jehoshaphat's prayer. O oh, our God, will you not exercise judgment on them? For we have no might to stand against this great company that is coming against us. Does this sound familiar, y'all? We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. All right, let's look at this. So when he, after he presents the problem, he asks for specifically what he wants. What does he say? He asks for specific help and rescue. 
he declares their helplessness without the Lord. We cannot fight this army. And then he says, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. That is declaring that your only hope is in the Lord. The Lord really likes this when we do this, okay? Let's get in alignment with this and let this be a picture of your heart. This moment, at least till the 20th and beyond, okay? This can be your heart posture for the rest of your life here on earth. So we have... He recognizes a vital need to seek the Lord. There's an emergency. Armies are coming to kill him. He has a vital need to seek the Lord. He begins to fast. He gathers together, and they're praying, and they stole the Lord together. They remind the Lord of all the great things that he's done before in regard to these, some of these armies. He presents the problem to the Lord, and then he asks specifically for help, rescue. He also says, I am absolutely helpless without you. We can't do this. And then he says, I don't know. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And so he's saying, there's nothing we can do. We're helpless. We need you to rescue us. Be the God that you are because we're the peon humans that we are. And we need you to be the God that you are. And we know that you will. So they declare their only hope is in him. He really likes that. Verse 13. Then what do they do? What do they do after they... Make their specific requests, declare their helplessness, and declare their only help, hope is in him. They stand. I did a video on standing. Very important. They stand before him. Okay? This is like Ephesians 6, 13 and 14. Right? Stand. Very important to stand in this posture. Stand there. Keep recognizing your vital need. Stand right there. Then God answers him. Them. And the Spirit of the Lord comes down and speaks. And so basically God says five things. He says, because he likes this posture so much, this positioning of the heart is, is a reality position. It's a position that represents reality. So what does God say? He says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. This battle is mine. And then the next thing he says, you will not have to fight. There's no need to fight. No, you don't have to fight. Again, stand still. Stand. Second time. E. See the salvation that I will provide. See this wonderful rescue that I'm going to perform for you because you're my jewel. Then what did they do after the Lord replied that way? They bowed down in worship. Okay? When you worship the Lord, a tremendous amount of spiritual power is released and you're opening the avenues and the channels and the spirit for him to do what he wants to do. It is an avenue and an opening for God's will to be done and for him to show his power and his might and his glory on your behalf. Verse 19, um, some of the Levites and different people would stand up to praise him. How did they praise him? With a loud voice. This is shouting. This is singing very loudly with confident expectation. Verse 20, believe and remain steadfast to the prophets. So believe this posture here and stand on it. Believe it and stand on it. And then the singers moved out in front of the army and they began to praise him. Okay? You need to be praising and worshiping the Lord all the time, but especially when you have an emergency situation. So they're out in front. What are they singing and praising? I mean, what, what words are they saying in their praise? They're saying, give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and loving kindness endure forever. Right? This is something we can sing in praise to him. While we're keeping our eyes on him, 
and expecting him and hoping that he will deliver us in our helplessness with our specific requests. All right? And then what happens? What happens after they do this? Verse 22, the self-slaughter of the enemies begins. And it goes on and on down the rest of the chapter. But I want you to see that this posturing and this positioning that Jehoshaphat takes is the positioning and the posture that we must take right now. And through the end of the month and as long as you are on this earth, you can live in this posture. It is a posture of humility, of dependence on the Lord, and of confident expectation in Him. So this chapter is a recipe for destruction. A recipe for destruction of your enemies and my enemies. All right, so I want to share this with you and I'm encouraging you to take it seriously and to pray the prayer. These enemies are coming against us, Lord. We don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And stay there. Stay there. I don't know what to do. My eyes are on you. Be open. That was my last video. Be open to what the Lord's going to do. Be humble, dependent, and have confident expectation of him. All right? Especially in this situation we're in. This could apply to every day of your life, but especially it's very poignant right now. All right? So I hope this is encouraging to you. This is something you can actually do to facilitate the maximum um, involvement of the Lord in your life and in our country. Okay? I hope this is helpful, and I pray that you will do it. And I pray that in Jesus' name. God bless you.